A basic memory hierarchy model consists of the secondary memory at the lowermost level, then the main memory, and then the cache, maybe more than one level of cache. And all the required programs and data are permanently stored in the secondary memory. Only a part of it is kept in the main memory, and again a part of it based on the locality of reference is kept in the cache. And since the secondary memory is very slow, the processor never directly access the secondary memory, but it can directly access the cache and main memory. Now, when the processor refers to a word using an address, it will be first searched in the higher most level. Here it is cache. If found, the word will be transferred to the processor. If not found, then the entire block containing the word will be transferred from the lower level here from the main memory to the cache and meanwhile the word will be transferred to the processor too. And if the search word is not even found in the main memory, then the block containing the word will be transferred from the next lower level here from secondary memory to main memory and then to cache and meanwhile the requested word will be transferred to the processor. Thus, if the searched word is found at a particular level, then it is called a hit at that level. If not found, then it's called a miss at that level. If found in cache, then it's a cache hit. If not found, it's a cache miss. If found in main memory, it's a page hit. And if not found, then it's a page miss. Now, what is hit ratio and miss ratio? Suppose we have 10 references to the following memory blocks. Among them, suppose the first 6 were hit and the last 4 were miss. Then the hit ratio is the ratio of the number of hits to the total number of references. Here it is 6 by 10. And miss ratio is the number of misses to the total number of references. Here it is 4 by 10. And always hit ratio plus miss ratio is equal to 1. Now moving to average memory access time. For this consider a small hierarchy with just two levels L1 and L2. It can be two levels of cache or it can be cache and main memory whatever be. Let the access time of L1 be T1 equals 5 nanoseconds and access time of L2 be T2 equals 20 nanoseconds and for L1 the hit ratio is H1 and what will be the hit ratio for L2 since this is the last level we assume that every requested word can be found that at this level thus the hit ratio here is equal to 1. If every request is a hit, it means if we can find everything in L1, then we need not go to the lower levels. In such case, per request, the access time is always 5 nanoseconds, which is very less, but this is not practical. And if every request is a miss, for every request, we should go to the lower level, and hence the access time will be much higher, so we should try to avoid it. So by making use of this hierarchy, we should try to increase the hit ratio to the maximum and by bringing the access time to an average level such that average memory access time is equal to hit ratio into hit time plus miss ratio into miss time. For every hit, we access it from the current level itself and for every miss, we are going to the lower level. Hence, it is hit ratio into hit time plus miss ratio into lower level access time. And in case of hit, the time taken is T1, the access time of the current level. So the hit time is T1, but what is lower level access time? We cannot specify that this lower level access time is equal to T2. The lower level access time depends upon how the processor is accessing this lower level with respect to the higher level. And there are two ways of access. One is simultaneous or parallel access and the other is hierarchical access. In simultaneous or parallel access, as we know when the processor refers to a word, it should be first searched in the higher most level. But here it will be parallelly, the processor will parallelly access and search the lower level too. 
the if it is a hit the time taken is t1 or 5 nanoseconds and in case it is a miss then l2 is already been accessed and searched for 5 nanoseconds now the search in l2 should be continued for another 15 nanoseconds Thus, in case of hit, the time taken is 5 nanoseconds and in case of miss, the overall time taken is 5 nanoseconds plus 15 nanoseconds, that is 20 nanoseconds. Thus, in simultaneous access, the hit time is T1 and the miss time is T2. The general equation is hit rate into hit time plus miss rate into lower level access time. Hit rate is H1, hit time is T1 and miss rate is M1. And what is lower level access time? While moving to the lower level overall the time taken is T2. Thus it is hit rate into T1 plus miss rate into T2 in case of simultaneous access. And in hierarchical access, when the processor refers to a word, that word will be first searched in the higher most level. Thus L1 will be first accessed and searched. And only if it is a miss, the lower level will be accessed and searched. So if it is a hit, the time taken is 5 nanoseconds. And if it is a miss, then only we will start searching in L2. Hence an additional time of 20 nanoseconds will be taken. Thus the hit time is T1, but the miss time is T1 plus T2. So in hierarchical access, the average memory access time is hit ratio into hit time T1 plus miss ratio into the lower level access time which is T1 plus T2. Now we can apply this equation recursively to find the average memory access time for any number of levels. Consider three levels L1, L2 and L3. Here the access time is T1, hit ratio is H1. Access time is T2, hit ratio is H2. Access time is T3 and since this is the last level, the hit rate is 1. Now the general equation is hit rate into hit time plus miss rate into lower level access time. We shall start from the higher most level. The average memory access time is equal to hit rate into hit time. Hit rate is H1 and here the hit time is T1 plus miss rate is M1 into lower level access time. And what is the lower level access time? It is the effective access time at L2. To find that, use the same equation, hit rate here into hit time here plus miss rate into lower level access time. Hit rate here is H2. And what is hit time? Since this is simultaneous access, a hit in L2 is actually a miss in L1 and a hit in L2. It means we could not find the word in L1, we found the word in L2. But while L1 was being accessed and searched, we were accessing and searching L2 too. So by finding a word in L2, the time taken, the overall time taken for that hit is actually T2. Thus hit rate into time taken is T2 plus miss rate into lower level access time. Now what is this lower level access time? This is the effective access time at the next lower level L3. And here again using the same equation, here the hit rate is 1. 1 into the time taken is T3 because we could not find the word in L1 and L2. We found it at L3 but this is simultaneous access hence the overall time taken will be T3 for the hit in L3. Now bringing all these together the equation becomes H1 into T1 plus M1 into H2 into T2 plus m2 into t3 distributing it we get h1 t1 plus m1 h2 t2 plus m1 m2 into 1 into t3 we can even consider it as 
hit rate into time taken t1 plus a miss at l1 and a hit at l2 into time taken is t2 and a miss at l1 and a miss at l2 into hit rate is 1 and the time taken is t3. This is the case of simultaneous axis. Now what for hierarchical axis? The general equation is average memory access time equals hit rate into hit time plus miss rate into lower level access time. We shall start from the higher most level. Hit rate H1 into time taken is T1 plus miss rate M1 into lower level access time. Now what is the lower level access time? It is the effective access time at the next level L2. Using the same equation here, hit rate H2 into hit time plus miss rate M2 into lower level access time. But what is the hit time here? This is hierarchical axis. A hit in L2 means a miss in L1 and a hit in L2. In that case, the time taken to access the word from L2 is actually T1 plus T2 because this is hierarchical access. Only after access in L1, we start the access in L2. So the time taken for that hit is T1 plus T2. Thus the hit time here is T1 plus T2. Thus H2 into T1 plus T2 plus M2 into lower level access time. And what is the lower level access time? This is the effective access time at the next level L3. Here using the same equation hit rate into hit time. Hit rate is 1 and what is the hit time? It is T1 plus T2 plus T3 because it was a miss in L1, miss in L2 and a hit in L3. Only after the access and search in L1 and L2, we start accessing and searching, searching L3. So for that hit, the time taken is T1 plus T2 plus T3. And the hit ratio, hit rate is 1, there is no chance of miss. Now bringing all the equations together, we get H1 into T1 plus M1 into H2 into T1 plus T2 plus M2 into T1 plus T2 plus T3. Distributing it, H1 into T1 plus M1 H2 into T1 plus T2 plus M1 M2 into 1 into T1 plus T2 plus T3. We can consider it as if it is a hit in L1, the time taken is T1. If it is a miss in L1 and a hit in L2, time taken is T1 plus T2. And if it is a miss in L1 and a miss in L2, the time taken is T1 plus T2 plus T3 with the hit rate 1. This is the equation for average memory access time in hierarchical access. If required, you can simplify it. By distributing it, we get H1 T1 plus M1 H2 T1 plus M1 H2 T2 plus M1 M2 T1 plus M1 M2 T2 plus M1 M2 T3. Since H2 plus M2 is equal to 1, hit ratio plus miss ratio is equal to 1, we shall take M1 T1 out from these two equations. Similarly, H2 plus M2 is equal to 1, so we shall take M1 T2 out from these two equations. So remaining we have M1 M2 into T3. Again, H1 plus M1 is equal to 1, so taking T1 out, the equation is T1 plus M1 T2 plus M1 M2 into T3. This is the simplified form of the equation for hierarchical axis. But these two are the equations which make sense and also understanding this recursive flow can help to solve the different types of questions.